If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, September 28, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. On today's show, Trent Grimsey, the fastest man across the English Channel, will join us in the Finis Monitor. Grimsey crossed a popular stretch of water in 6 hours and 55 minutes, a remarkable feat made more amazing by the fact that it was his first time swimming in the English Channel. Trent joins us right now from his home in Brisbane, Australia. Trent, good to see you today. How are you? I'm good, thank you, and look, thanks for having me on the show. Our pleasure. Congratulations on the swim. It must be, you know, two weeks later still just kind of making you feel good. Oh, definitely. Look, I mean, it's uh, like every time I think about it, I still think, um, like, wow, I just, just can't believe it's really happened. I still don't even think it's sunk in properly yet, so it's, uh, look, it's, I'm just over the moon. Well, I, I would imagine this kind of, you know, I know you didn't get to compete in the Olympics, but at least it kind of maybe equates to winning an Olympic gold medal. I mean, you're the fastest to ever make that crossing. That's, that's it. And look, uh, I mean, I think I'm just as happy now uh, having this record as, as I would be probably with an Olympic gold medal, to be honest. Um, I, look, I think sitting at home watching the, uh, watching the Olympics, the uh, Olympic marathon swim, it definitely made me want this record even more and uh, definitely made me more focused uh, and, and, and train hard harder to, to get the record. Now, when you first made the decision to cross the English Channel, were you just thinking, I just want to make it across, or did you always have your eye on Peter Stoichev's world record? Um, not, look, I, I always have my eye on that world record, to be honest. Um, I, I don't like doing things and, and not, being, not being the best or not being the fastest. So, um, I mean, uh, as soon as I... Um, I guess I booked it back in 2009. I booked my, my place uh, with my pilot. And yeah, I mean, I knew then that I wanted to break the record and um, I, I wanted to wanted to go on the seven hours. So three, you had basically had three years of, of waiting for this moment to happen. I, was that right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, obviously, to get a good spot, a good tide, um, a good position in that tide, you need to book uh, like weeks in advance. So I booked in 2009 and... I was the, the first swimmer in my tide with my uh, with my pilot, Mike Rohrer. So look, um, and I mean, I was just lucky enough that come come the day, uh, I had good conditions. The seas were, were reasonably flat, and look, everything just went my way. Yeah, most people talk about when they do the English Channel swim. It's very rough. The tides are rough. You got um, it's a major shipping channel. You got all these boats and ships coming through. So you're saying it was pretty much calm the whole swim for you? Uh, look, there was uh, maybe three hours in the middle there. Where it did get it did get a little bit choppy, but I mean, yeah, for it, it, it was pretty flat, like the start and the finish. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you said before, it's, a, it's, it's it is the busiest shipping lane in the world. There were quite a few ships that came pretty close um, sometimes, and uh, I mean, there was a lot of marine life we saw out there too. But look, it was it was just great, and yeah, I, I did have pretty good conditions. I was very lucky. Well, now you're the fastest man to make a single crossing. You ever think about doing a double crossing, maybe even a triple crossing? Look, look, I, I definitely am. It's uh, it's really hard to explain the English Channel. It's uh, I mean, I think only people that have ever swum it before can can really understand. But you swim it once, and it's just not really enough. You you got to keep going back there. And uh, I, I I'll definitely go back. And um, I booked in again for 2014 because I I honestly believe I can knock probably another five or ten minutes off that time I did. So um. I'll, I'll just do an solo 2014, and then maybe the year after I might, uh, might attempt a double. So you think you, you just said you could knock five or ten minutes off. What do you think that will be, just better conditioning? Yeah, look, uh, better, uh, hopefully better conditions. Um, I mean, I went into it not 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 fully understanding just, just what to expect. So I think um, there are a lot of things that if I was to do it again, I'd probably do slightly different. Um, I mean, I know what to expect now. Uh, I know just when it's going to get tough. Uh, mentally and, and physically, so I mean, I'll just, just slightly change my training to, uh, I guess, accommodate for those things. Well, you had a pretty good year in 2012, not just the English Channel Crossing, you were the 
FINA Open Water Grand Prix circuit winner. You dethroned Peter Stoichev again, who had been winning every year. Uh, what has been the key to your success in 2012? Um, look, I think, uh, I mean, I'm just in a really, really happy place at the moment. Like, I've just got a really good team. Like, I trained with both my brothers, um, Ridge and Cody at, at Launton. You know, we've, we've got a good coach there. It's a really good setup. And uh, look, just a good network of people around me as well. Got really good physio, uh, like sports doctor, uh, massage therapist. It's, and I mean, like, I'm still living at home with my family too. So it's, uh, it's, I'm just really comfortable where I am at the moment. Just really enjoying swimming. And I, I think that. that helps if you're happy and just your everyday life it makes things a lot easier definitely does so i would imagine next on your list is world championship and olympic medals that's it i mean world championships next year they're in uh, in barcelona so I'd, I'd definitely like to uh, uh to win a gold medal there that's that's the next big goal well the you know the olympics it's a 10k which is a lot shorter than what you you've been swimming this year you've been doing a lot of longer swims 30k 25k um, the the English Channel, I believe, was about 34k. So, you know, is that is that deemed a sprint for you to do a 10k? Um, not not really. I guess like I kind of grew up um, being a pool swimmer. I, I guess I made the switch in 2008 from pool to open water. So, I, I guess I, I still do have a uh, that that 1500 speed. Well, it's not what it what it, what it used to be. It's uh, I mean, I, I still can swim a decent 1500. So, I think I'm very lucky in in that respect. Um, I'm still having that speed, so look, it shouldn't be too hard to, to go back down to the 10k. Um, if anything, I think swimming those those long swims, it's definitely helped my endurance. So now I just tweak my training a little bit, uh, do a little bit more speed work, and uh, and look, I think I should be fine to start uh, racing the 10ks again. Do you think you want to do what Usmaluli did, win a medal in the 1500 in the pool in, in Rio, and then win a medal in the the 10k and in, in as well? Oh no, definitely not. I think my pool swimming days are well and truly over. Um, I, I just I, I like open water. I think uh, I still race pool a little bit, but it's uh, I mean I don't have the speed now. The, the I mean we have a lot of fast young guys coming up in Australia in the fifteen hundred, and I just don't have the speed those guys have now. Like I, I struggled to break four minutes for four hundred, and uh, this guy is swimming like three fifties. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm happy with my open water now. Um, so yeah, I'll just purely be uh, focusing on that. Well, you mentioned your brothers, Cody and Ridge. Uh, they swam in the Tiburon Mile, uh, which you've also swam in. On the same weekend, you were doing your English Channel swim. So is it a case yeah. of them just kind of wanting to follow in your footsteps and not let you have all the glory? Um, oh, look, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's really good training with them because it's uh, like we push each other. Um, like Ridge is, he came from a pool background as well. Oh, like we all did, sorry, but Ridge is more 200, 400. But he's got that speed, like, that, that really fast speed um, me, me and Cody don't really have. So, um, I mean, it's great to race him in all the sprint sets, and, and Cody is like almost a clone of me. So uh, he's more endurance. So it's, it's great to race him in, in I guess, those uh, those long sets we do. So it's it's just a really good environment we've got down the pool now. And, look, I think I think we feed off each other's success as well. Like, I, I get a real kick out of uh, seeing them swimming so well, and I, th I think they do seeing me swim well as well. It's probably been a big help having them to train with. I mean, these long sets probably can get pretty boring. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, it's always good to have, have others there, keep your company. Um, I mean, it, it does get pretty lonely doing things by yourself. Well, it's, it's been great kind of watching you progress over the years. I, re I remember when you were kind of making an open water debuts back in 2008, 2009. Into, um, I mean, looking back, I mean, did you really think that 2012 – You'd be the fastest man to cross English Channel and the the best marathon swimmer in the world. Look, I mean, I I always had the dream, um, but I guess uh, it's just like anyone. Like you, you have the dream, you you want it to happen, um, but in the back of your mind, there's always a little bit of doubt. And um, but look, I mean, we just kind of my coach and I we just prepared probably from World Championships last year after that, we, we said, okay, there's like 18 months now to swim the channel. Let's really do everything we can to, uh, to, to make sure 2012 is a good year and, and we do everything we can to swim well. Well, I'm sure 2013 is going to be just as good, Trent. Thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck to uh, everything you do in the, down the road. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. So that's Trent Grimsey joining us from Brisbane, Australia, talking about his English Channel swim.
And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. As always, we invite you to post your thoughts on topics discussed on today's show, either on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, or on Twitter. Thanks for watching and enjoy the weekend.